Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I've got a really easy project for you and I call it a scrap buster project. It's making round pot holders with the option of putting a little applique design on it. You can make them for every season of the year, special holidays and events. So let's take a close-up look at one of them. If you're just starting to learn how to sew and you've not made anything before, you may just want to start out with a plain round pot holder. Really simple to make, take you maybe 10 minutes to make if that much. Or if you want to take it a step further, you can learn how to make this really easy hanging loop so that you can hang it up in your kitchen and you have an option of putting a really easy applique design on it and it's really really simple so let's get started you'll need approximately two squares of fabric one for the front and back of the pot holder they're about eight to eight and a half inches it really depends on how big you draw your circle just make sure your fabric is larger than your circle to hang the pot holder if you want to be able to hang it cut a piece of fabric that's two inches wide by five inches long. You'll also need for the insulation inside the pot holder two layers of cotton batting or just one layer of cotton batting and one layer of Insulbrite. If you want to do the applique in the middle, select some type of fabric that you like. I'm going to cut out one of these four leaf clovers and when you cut it out, make sure you leave a little bit of fabric, maybe a quarter of an inch, extending out past your design. Also, to do the applique, you're going to need a piece of paper, or if you have stabilizer fabric, you can use that. But paper, everybody's got paper around their house. You'll also need iron-on fusible web, and there's several different ones out there. I'm using light steam seam Pellon also makes it, so it's an iron-on fusible glue that helps to hold the applique in place. Bring your two pieces of fabric together for the front and the back. Take something round from your kitchen. Mine is about a seven and a half inch bowl, and go ahead and trace all the way around it. Then after you've traced around it, put some pins to hold the fabric together while you cut it out. After you've done that, then go ahead and cut right on your drawn lines. On the back side of your fusible whip, there are detailed instructions. So if I deviate from those instructions, always follow these. The reason why I might be deviating slightly is because I live in a very dry climate and my fusible web has a tendency to dry out even if I close and seal up my bag. So how I'm going to do it is I'm going to remove the paper that does not have the glue. So the glue is right here. It feels just a little sticky. As I said, my a uh, fusible web dries out. So I'm going to place the back side on the glue of that. So I've got my glue side up right here. and But my glue is not quite sticky enough because like I said, I live in a dry climate. So I've got the back of it against the glue side. Then I'm going to put my other piece of paper on top that I took off. And then I'm going to put a, a cloth over it, just so that I don't burn anything. Then I'm just going to hold it down for maybe 10, 12 seconds, just to reactivate the glue. Now I'm pulling that paper off. Now you want to cut right on the edge of the design that you want on the front. So I'm going to cut just on the outer edge of this green band. So I'm going to cut all of this black off out here. 
take one of your circle pieces for the pot holder, have the front side facing up. Take your applique piece and on the back side you want to remove that paper. If you're having a hard time getting off, just score it a little bit, tearing the paper, and then remove it. And center the design inside your circle. Once you have it centered and you like where it is, then go ahead and finger press it down. To permanently fuse it onto the fabric, go to your ironing board and you'll need a pressing cloth. I usually just take a plain piece of fabric. Dampen your fabric a little bit and then hold it down for anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. Again, always read your package instructions if you're not sure. To do the applique stitches, I recommend that you use an open toe presser foot. It's easier to see where you're stitching when you're using this. If you don't have it, it's not a deal breaker. You can still do your stitches. This foot just makes it easier. Look at the different applique stitches that you have on your sewing machine. If you do not have applique stitches, you probably have a zigzag stitch then I would recommend that you use that. But these three right up here are called satin stitches and they're very popular in applique. Let me show you the one I'm going to use. I'm going to be using this one right here. I recommend that you use matching thread or something that complements your applique. Put your paper directly underneath your applique piece and then go ahead and line up your design on the very edge. And I'm going to lower my needle first so I can get it to start right exactly where I want it. And just go ahead and begin stitching your design. And whenever you're doing applique stitches, you just need to turn your fabric slowly as you go around curves. When you're done, then go ahead and just tear the paper off of the back. To make the hanging loop, have the back side of the fabric facing up. Fold it in half and then press. Unfold and then you're going to bring these sides towards that center and then press again. Bring the other side in and press it again. Then fold it in half and press it one more time. Then stitch along this edge to close it up. Take your two layers of cotton batting and lay those down. Then take your fabric for the back, place it on top, and you're having the front side of your fabric facing up. Pin your loop on like this, bringing the two ends at the edge. Take your piece for the front and then turn it front side down. Now if there's a specific direction that you want this to be upright on as you hang it, just make sure that it is facing in the correct way. And then go ahead and pin all of this down around all of the edge. As you're pinning, leave an area open so that you can turn this front side out. So you would start on this side of your opening to stitch. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and ending of your opening here. And then stitch a quarter of an inch seam all the way around. After you finish stitching, then you want to do little clips along here. And make sure that you don't cut into your stitches. Now along the opening here, you're going to do very short clips. They're very, very small. You don't want to make them too long 
because then it's going to be really hard to turn these edges inside when you need to close this up. After you've done all of your clipping, then go ahead and open this up and begin turning it front side out. Then reach inside and just push against your seam to push all of those edges out. At the opening, fold the edges inside and pin. And I would use a lot of pins so you can keep that really nice curve there. And then stitch close to the edge right along here. And then one more stitch that you need to do is to stitch around the outer edge of your applique all the way around. And I would use the same thread that you use to do your applique stitches. And this holds everything in place. If you're interested in learning more about machine applique and how to make some of these really pretty and fun designs, then play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, would you please click on that old thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click on that red subscribe button down there in that lower right hand corner of your screen. Make sure you click on that little bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. If for some reason you're not receiving those email notifications, go to your cell phone or iPad, click on settings, and turn notifications in the on position. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, so glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!